When we talk about abnormal vaginal bleeding, most people think about too much bleeding. Um, but abnormal vaginal bleeding can also mean not enough bleeding. In other words, somebody that's not getting their menstrual cycle at all or getting it very irregularly. And that can be a problem as well. And that can cause really two issues. The, the probably most obvious one is that if you're not getting your menstrual cycle at all or you're not getting your menstrual cycle regularly, chances are you're not making eggs and therefore you're not going to be able to get pregnant. So if you want to get pregnant and you're not getting your period, that could certainly be a problem. And so that's one reason why not having enough bleeding or enough menstrual cycles or any menstrual cycles uh, can be a problem. But even if you don't want to get pregnant, not having your period regularly um, can increase your risk of uterine cancer. And the reason for that is that if the uterus is under the influence of the female hormones, particularly estrogen, but doesn't slough off regularly, that can overstimulate the uterus and that can be a risk factor for something called um, endometrial hyperplasia, which can lead to uterine cancer. So that's another reason that we worry about this. Another issue that can happen if you're getting your periods very irregularly is that instead of having a small amount of bleeding every month, you could sort of build up and then have a giant amount of bleeding all at once and that can overwhelm your system and make you anemic or even bleed so much that you might need a blood transfusion. So those are reasons that although it might be convenient to not have your period very often, it may not be uh, healthy for you. Now one caveat I want to say is that if you're not getting your period regularly because your hormones are being manipulated with uh, either uh, certain types of birth control pills or the implant or the progesterone IUD, that's actually very safe. And the medicines are designed to protect your uterus uh, even though you're not getting your period. So we're talking about people that aren't on any medication or any hormones that aren't getting their period regularly. And there's sort of different categories of that. The, the sort of fancy names, oligomenorrhea, that means that you have periods but they just come very infrequently. Amenorrhea means you don't get your periods at all. And there can be primary amenorrhea, which means you've never got your period any time in your life, or secondary amenorrhea, which means you, had, you have had periods at some point and then they've stopped. Now, all of these are treatable. The one thing that's really very different is primary amenorrhea, and this is actually very rare. And there are some genetic problems that can cause primary amenorrhea, um, uh, and that really is sort of a specialty uh, workup. Uh, secondary amenorrhea and oligomenorrhea tend to be caused by similar things. Um, although there are a couple of things that can cause secondary amenorrhea uh, that are different than oligomenorrhea. So in other words, not having your periods at all, there can be some things that cause that that wouldn't necessarily cause you to just have your periods infrequently. So what are some of those things? So for amenorrhea, uh, one thing is that there can be scarring of the uterus, so-called Asherman syndrome, where the inside of the uterus has been destroyed to the point where there's nothing there to bleed. And that would make it so that you no longer have periods. That usually happens from some type of trauma, um, a traumatic DNC. If you had a really bad infection or a really bad bleed after having a delivery, for instance, and you had to have emergency surgery, those are the kind of things that can cause scarring of the inside of the uterus. It's pretty rare, but it can occur. Now, most people that aren't getting their periods frequently um, or at all have some sort of hormonal reason that they're not getting those. Uh, and the, t there's many different types of hormonal reasons and the treatment will sort of depend on what that is. It may be that you have a thyroid problem and then the treatment for that would be thyroid replacement. There's a hormone called prolactin that's made in the brain that stimulates the breast milk, but that also stops you from having a period. So if your brain, even if you're not lactating, is giving out prolactin when it shouldn't, that can um, stop your periods. And the treatment for that would be to uh, use a medicine to stop that extra prolactin and then your periods will come back to normal. But most women that aren't having regular periods, it's just because their estrogen and progesterone levels aren't cycling correctly. And there's different reasons for that. And the treatment of that is gonna depend on what your goals are. So if you desire pregnancy, then we need to give you medicine to help you get pregnant as well as control your cycles. If you're not desirous of pregnancy, then usually birth control is the easiest way to both keep you from getting pregnant and cycle your periods. Now, for those people that uh, don't require birth control but aren't trying to get pregnant, um, then another option would be a medicine called Provera, which is typically given for 10 days out of the month that will give a period. And so for those women, what I'll tell them is that, look, you don't really need to have a period every month, 
but you shouldn't go more than three months with a period. So if you skip that second month, go ahead and take the Provera, and that way by the end of the three months, you'll have a nice normal period. And that's enough to keep you safe. So those are sort of ideas of how to treat um, oligomenorrhea or secondary amenorrhea, and some of the concepts of what can cause it and why it does need to be treated. Medtwice.com